Welcome back. This lesson will allow you to peek into what the Scala compiler and runtime can do besides the things that we usually take for granted when we talk about the type system. I'm Daniel, and in this video, we're going to talk about reflection. All right, so as usual, let's go to the part five type system package and let's create a new Scala application. Right click new Scala class, let's call this reflection, make it an object and as always extends app. All right, so if you've written a lot of code for the JVM, if you're an expert Java developer, you might have got to uh, this problem, which can be summed up by this one question. How do I instantiate a class or invoke a method by calling just its name dynamically at runtime. This is the problem of reflection. So reflection is the ability of the JVM to inspect and operate on classes and instances and call methods at runtime. Now, Java already offers a reflection API, which is of course available to Scala as well, but because the Scala types are richer, that is, for example, they can have unknown type parameters in the example of the higher kind of types, they can have abstract type members themselves and so on and so forth. It doesn't always give you the correct results. So we will not use the Java reflection API here in the Scala code. So in this lesson, we'll focus on Scala reflection API exclusively. It's also much bigger than we're going to write here. So this will serve as a some kind of a rockstar introduction. Now the Scala reflection API, along with some experimental features, such as macros and quasi quotes, allow Scala program to inspect and modify even other programs and even themselves, which introduces the concept and the huge topic of meta programming, which is really outside the scope of even this course. So if you guys really need this, then uh, let me know and I'll put together kind of a super rockstar course of metaprogramming for Scala and the JVM if you really need this. So all of this intro aside, let's do some reflection. Let's say we have our classic case class of person with a name. And let's say this person has a method called say my name, which just returns unit and just prints line an interpolated string saying, hi, my name Hi, my name is dollar name. Okay, so a very, very simple class. There are some steps that we need to follow in order to invoke the Scala reflection API. First of all, step number zero is to do an import. And we are going to import Scala reflect runtime universe. And uh, I'm just going to call this universe by a type alias, naming it RU, just for a uh, shorthand notation. Okay, so this is the package which has a lot of uh, classes, types, and methods useful for Scala reflection. Second step is to instantiate what is called a mirror. A mirror is something that can reflect things very abstractly. So if I say val, let's call this m, by calling ru dot runtime mirror, by calling a class loader for the JVM, a class loader is an instance of a JVM class that can load other classes at runtime. Okay, so I'm going to say get class dot get class loader. If you're an experienced Java developer, you know that this is the standard way of getting your hands on the current class loader by calling get class on whatever object you're in, in this case, reflection, and getting the class loader which manages this class. In our case, we have simple Scala applications, so we won't bother getting other class loaders. We're just gonna get the class loader for this whole project, which is the class loader for this particular class. Now, here is where things start to get interesting, because once you instantiate a mirror by calling ru.runtimeMirror of the current class loader, now because the current class loader has access to all the classes, you can instantiate a class object. So the step number two is to create a class object. And I'm going to call this class with z. And I'm just going to call m dot and I'm going to call the method called static class, and I'm going to pass in the fully qualified name of person, for example. 
So I'm going to put in here the fully qualified lectures dot part five type system dot reflection dot person. So person is an inner class of the class reflection. Okay, so this is the fully qualified name of the person class, which is very interesting because we're passing it literally, but it can also be computed from somewhere else. So this is creating a class object by name. This is very interesting. And this is where we start to get into the reflection territory. Now notice that the type of this class thing is a runtime universe dot class symbol. Now the Scala API has all kinds of symbols or symbol types for all the possible things that it can handle through reflection. You're going to see method symbol, uh, type symbol, and other kinds of symbols that it can access through reflection. And the way that we are accessing a member through reflection is to create Step number three, a reflected mirror. So I'm just going to call this class mirror or CM. And I'm going to call this mirror object dot. And I'm going to say reflect class. So you notice that this reflect class takes a class symbol that the runtime can create for me. So when I create as a static class, then it accesses the class loaders uh, loaded classes, and it creates a, a little class symbol that I can then use to say reflect class. And I'm going to pass my little class instance here. So how are these two different the class and the class mirror? Well, as I said, class is a class symbol, which means it's kind of like a description of the class. So you can think of this as a description. Now the class mirror is interesting because acting on a class, it can access its members like constructors and methods and so on and so forth and can do things like instantiate objects and invoke methods and so on and so forth. For example, let's invoke the constructor for this class. So we can dynamically instantiate a person without actually calling the constructor. So we can do that at runtime by computing the class's name and invoking its constructor. So let's in step four, get the constructor by saying, let's call this constructor equals, and I'm going to say class, the Z class dot primary constructor. This is a method on the class symbol. So you, you notice that we have access or methods for the class symbol. And I'm going to call this uh, primary constructor as method because I want to invoke it. Now in step five, I want to reflect this thing because the constructor, as you see, is another symbol which describes the method, what kind of parameters it gets, what kind of return types um, it has and so on and so forth. So I'm going to say reflect the constructor by creating a constructor mirror. So let's call this constructor mirror. So notice we have symbol mirror, symbol mirror, this kind of pattern just repeats in the uh, Scala API. So we are going to say uh, the class mirror dot reflect constructor this symbol. So we are going to pass in the symbol here. And finally, just invoke the constructor. Notice that the constructor is a method symbol. So after we've reflected that we are going to get a method mirror. So now this method mirror can also do things like we did with the class mirror thing. So we can say val instance equals constructor mirror dot apply. And we can pass in actual parameters here, for example, John. So finally, we can actually use this instance. So for example, if I print instance, I'm going to say a person with the name John. All right. So this is the reflection pattern, which allows us to, for example, instantiate a dynamically computed class name at runtime with some arguments. This is pretty cool. That was one use case. Let's go through another use case just as an example. Let's say I have an instance already computed. Let's say uh, P equals person 
Mary, something like that. But this is not something that you create, but it's something that you obtain from somewhere else, like from, for example, from the wire, as a serialized object, for example. And let's say you also compute from somewhere else the method name that you want to invoke. So method name computed from somewhere else. And I'm going to say you know, val method name equals say my name, which happens to be the method from our little class person. But of course, we don't know what this value's type actually is, and we don't know what the uh, method actually is. So we uh, can only call this dynamically. All right. So the way that we would do that would be again to instantiate mirrors and symbols. Now we already are done with step number one with the mirror because we already have it. So step one, obtain the general mirror. Now step number two is to reflect the instance instead of the class that you want to instantiate. So I'm just going to say val, let's call this reflected, equals mirror, the general one, reflect. And notice that we have a reflect t typed, and I'm going to pass it the person that I received from the wire. Now, for the sake of this example, I'm going to show you another way of getting a method symbol by saying, let's call this method symbol equals, and here's what I'm going to write. I'm going to write ru, which is the universe from the imported Scala reflect runtime. So ru dot type of person. Now you may or may not know the type in advance. So I'm just going to put this here in the assumption that you do know the type. But if you don't, you can just reflect the class and you can um, create another method symbol based on that. So uh, for the for this example, I'm just going to show you this alternative way of getting your hand on the method symbol. So after you've done that, notice that you're getting a type instance. This is very abstract. We're going to talk about types very shortly. But once you get a hold of a type, then you can say declare, and this is the method that we're going to use. And inside, we're going to pass it a name, runtime universe dot name type, which is ru term name with our method name, which we compute, as I said, from elsewhere. So ru term name method name. And then, because this whole thing returns a general symbol, we need to convert this to a method symbol, like we did with a primary constructor. So we are going to call as method. So notice that uh, symbols have uh, these kinds of methods to convert uh, in between each other. So we have as method, we have is module, as module, is module class, as class, and so on and so forth. So we have a method symbol. Now we need to reflect the method. So for reflect the method. So I'm just going to call, let's call this method simply by saying reflected, which is the instance that's being reflected by the person that we received from the wire. So reflected, so reflected dot reflect method reflect method with the method symbol. So this is a reflected method mirror, which can remember it can do things like, for example, invoke. And here's what we're going to do in step number five, just invoke the method by simply saying method dot apply. And if I run this, I'm going to see to the console, my name is Mary. So notice that we called the method correctly. So these are two examples of the way that you would invoke or use a member or a method at runtime just by using their name. So the pattern here is to instantiate a mirror first by calling runtime mirror of the class loader, and then reflecting whatever it is that you would use for invoking the member on at runtime. So in the first case, we reflected a class, and then 
in the second example we reflected an instance. So if you take a look at this reflected type, you see that this is an instance mirror. So you get a hold of a mirror of the thing that you want to use, and then you create a symbol of the thing that you want to invoke. So in the first example, we used a constructor as a method symbol, and here we have a method as a method symbol. And once you get a hold of that symbol, you can create a reflected version of that thing, in, the, in our case, the constructor and the method, and then you just invoke that thing that you obtain at the end. Let's take a small break and let's continue this lesson in the next video where I'm going to talk about reflection in the context of type erasure.